In August 1966, the Beatles unleashed an album that would forever alter the course of pop music. Revolver. Its opening track, Taxman, counted in the beginning of a bold new era. One, two. But there's a hotly debated mystery in that fantastic opening sequence. And as a fair warning, once I point it out, you can't unhear this. First off, there's actually a double mystery here. If you've listened closely to the song before, you probably have heard two different count-ins. The first is very clear. One, two, three, four, one, two. There's also a second one, following closely behind, partially buried in the background of the mix. There's a long and contentious debate among fans about who is actually doing each count-in. But before we explore the mystery, we'll first review the song's interesting recording history. Then we'll attempt to unveil the mystery beetle, or Beatles, behind the count-ins. On April 20th, 1966, the Beatles entered EMI Studios to begin work on a couple of songs that would eventually end up on their new LP, Revolver. The second song of that day's session was called Taxman, written by George Harrison about his newfound frustration with the heavy taxation on income in Great Britain at the time. The band ran through a few takes of the rhythm track, but none of them were particularly to their liking. They returned to the studio the next day, and after 11 new takes, they perfected the song's backing track, with George on rhythm guitar, Ringo on drums, and Paul contributing a fantastic bass line, inspired by legendary Motown session bassist James Jamerson. With the rhythm track settled, the band turned to the vocals. George recorded a double-tracked lead part, Let me tell you how it will be and Paul and John contributed various callbacks and harmonies throughout. If you drive a car, I'll tax the street. If you try to sit, I'll tax your seat. Among these was a clever snippet in the latter verses that ultimately didn't make it into the final version. The last task for the day was to record a guitar solo. George attempted a few versions, but he couldn't seem to get the right formula. Instead, Paul stepped in. The switch paid off, resulting in the electrifying solo that we hear today. There's another little curious anomaly relating to the guitar solo, but I'll get to that a little bit later. After a few more small additions, such as a tambourine part, the day session was complete. They returned the next day, April 22nd, and added a few more touches, including a cowbell and replacing the anybody got a bit of money parts with two new topical lines. Ah, ah, Mr. Wilson. Ah, ah, Mr. Heath. With that, the song was mostly complete and would be mixed for the album a few weeks later. There's an interesting anomaly worth noting here. The ending of the song originally sounded like this. Oh, but, me, but during the final mixing of the song, they decided to overdub a direct copy of the solo section, blending it seamlessly over George's last word and then fading it out. Pretty clever, right? We still haven't covered one key element yet, the count-in. At some point during these sessions, the band decided to sequence George's new composition as the new album's opener, as a strong vote of confidence in his emerging songwriting prowess. As a special touch, they decided to overdub a new count-in, possibly as a throwback to their debut LP, Please Please Me, which kicked off their career with another rousing count-in. One, two, three, five! Of course, being the Beatles, this updated version would have to be a bit cheekier. In this case, perhaps literally, spoken with a deep draw. One, two, three, four, <laughs> one, two. This new count-in would be overdubbed, only partially obscuring an earlier count-in that was caught live during the recording of the rhythm track. One, two, three, four, <laughs> one, two, three, four. Here's where the debate comes in. Who is actually doing these two different count-ins? Beatle books, websites, YouTube comments, and message boards are all over the place here. Some report that Paul did both. Others believe George did both. Some suggest George in the louder one and Paul in the background one, and vice versa. 
As if this mess of contradictory modern accounts didn't complicate things enough, in the December 1966 issue of the Beatles Monthly Magazine, a curious fan who would probably love this channel asked this exact question. The response, attributed allegedly to George, claims that John did the count-in. Given John's occasional use of odd voices elsewhere in the Beatle catalog, it certainly seems plausible. But as I've mentioned in other videos, even first-hand accounts are not necessarily definitive, as memories tend to be faulty. It's also not clear which count in this response is even referring to, since we know there are two. Let's listen a little more closely to both count-ins. The original live count-in, captured by one of the instrument microphones during the recording of the rhythm track, definitely sounds like either Paul or George. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. To my ears, it sounds a little more like George. Alternatively, it could be Paul, since the song technically begins with the bass guitar note. One, two, three, four. But who do you think is doing this original count-in? Let me know in the comments. As for the overdubbed, more prominent count-in, I used to assume this was George, putting on a goofy voice for his own song. One, two, three, four, <laughs> one, two. But some fans have pointed to excerpts of Paul using similar voices in a couple of instances. For example, during a section on the quirky B-side, You Know My Name, Look Up the Number. You know, you know, you know my name. It turns up again on a 1969 outtake of You Never Give Me Your Money, released as a part of the Abbey Road Deluxe Edition in 2019. You win. I'm in love with you. Well, all right. One, two, three, four, love with you. Well, all right. Or is it really George? Or even as the Beatles newsletter suggests, John? Some of you might also be wondering, if one Beatle is doing the count-in, then who's coughing? Four, one, as with all of these debates, the real answer, or lack thereof, isn't particularly important. What's notable is how these organic little anomalies reflect the richness of the analog era, especially at a time when many bands were beginning to experiment with studio techniques and push the limits of what was expected and possible. As for Taxman, there are so many elements that make it special. It's the first and only time that a George Harrison song would open a Beatle album. And it's just one of George's three total contributions to Revolver. Another first up to that point in her career. And a sign of George's increasing maturity and respect as a songwriter. Thematically, Taxman was a significant departure from their work up until that point in time, which had almost exclusively focused on the themes of love and relationships. Suddenly, there's a relatable and, for its time, provocative political message. As a song, there are so many fun, clever little touches that turn it into an earworm, such as the doubled syllables during the verses and those quintessential Beatle harmonies. You get too cold, I want I sit, sit, sit. your seat. And Paul's groovy bass line. Taxman also has an interesting link to the very last track on Revolver, Tomorrow Never Knows, another song that would radically redefine popular music by breaking just about every convention. Listen to the guitar solo on Tomorrow Never Knows. When reversed, it sounds strikingly similar to Paul's solo on Taxman. This resemblance has led some fans to believe that it may have been taken simply from the Taxman session and reversed, and it bookends the album nicely. Taxman blends so many styles together seamlessly, from early psychedelic rock to Motown funk to Indian raga, and it's a remarkable achievement for a two and a half minute pop song, and a hint of what was to come. I wasn't around when the Revolver album came out in 1966, but that famous count-in and two, everything three, that followed for the next four, half hour one, must have been enthralling for anyone hearing Revolver for the very first time. It signaled that the Beatles had unquestionably turned a corner, unleashing new musical ideas that would spill over into pop music for decades to come. And as George foreshadowed in that marvelous opening line, Let me tell you how it will be. Indeed. What do you think of Taxman and the count-in debate? Let me know in the comments, and as always, thanks for subscribing and listening.